Blessings, blessings, how you doing? Okay, I'm going to get started and everybody else can catch us on the replay. My name is Apostle Elisa Biggers and this is a spinoff for um, my Deliver Me From Me. How you doing? Blessings, blessings, blessings. Um, and this is a portion where I do personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. And so I just do a 15-minute nugget. Um, and this is a spinoff from the Deliver Me From Me on Thursday. But again, like I say, blessings where I do one-on-one -on -one coaching to help people um go through whatever that they may dealing with through sound biblical teaching and because a lot of times we try to do things by ourselves and sometimes you need somebody to walk you through the process so this is a page that if you're interested in my personal coaching just please inbox me but today i'm not going to prolong the time today we're going to talk about having faith in god having faith in god this is the time blessings 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 this is the time that we really got to have faith in god because can i tell you when you look at what you see on the television you look at what you see all around you. Can I tell you, the enemy want to frustrate us. He want to make us seem like that God has lied to us, that God is not going to take care of us, to make us, to make it feel like, you know what, it's just, and it's overwhelming. But can I tell you what faith is? Faith is what you cannot see with your natural eyes. We got to remember that God is an invisible God, and he is a, if he is an invisible God, you got to understand that the Bible says it's impossible to please him without faith. And so where it looks like your situation it looks like you may not have the money for your bills it may look like you, your family is in uh chaos it may look like your health is going down but you got to begin to know that god is faithful the bible says he's faithful to perform every promise and we got to begin to know that we got to begin to hold on you got to understand that even though the enemy is at you because he wants you to doubt that God is not going to do what he said he's going to do. Can I tell you, we got to begin to stay in the word of God. If you're going to walk in faith, you got to make sure that you're staying in the word of God. This is the time that we, can afford, we can't afford not to be in the word. Can I tell you, the Bible says meditate on the word day and night. And we got to stay in that word. We got to ponder on that word because the word is what's going to help us to hold on to the faith. Can I tell you that faith is a guarantee that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Faith is his word. And we got to know how to hold on to his word. We got to even know how to encourage yourself in the Lord. A lot of times we say, well, I feel bad. I don't feel like, I don't know how God is going to can I tell you, you don't have to know how God is going to work it out. He just needs you to believe him. He just needs you to hold on to his word. He needs you to contend for the faith. He needs you to continue to speak it. Do you not know by having faith, you got to continue to speak the word out of your mouth. Can I tell you, you got to get you some index cards. Put the scripture what you believe in God to do. Write it on the index card. Write it on your mirror. Write it on your refrigerator. You got to begin to get so full of faith on his word that what God promised to do, he's going to do it. Can I tell you that even you got to understand, we can't even get distracted. The enemy will bring things into our lives to make us get distracted. So you will say, you know what? God ain't going to do it. No, you got to begin to be intentional and you got to begin to hold on to your faith. Can I tell you that this is going to, it's going to, uh, uh, it's going to, uh, it's going to try you. It's going to, you're going to have to do this with everything that's within you. Can I tell you that? not the time to take a break. This is not the time to say, well, you know what, whatever happens, happens. No, this is what we're going to have to hold on to the word of God. Can I tell you that even when believe in God for some promises. You got to be careful who you're talking to. Sometimes when we're believing God for things, we're telling people who don't have faith. And can I tell you, they will put their mouth on it. Girl, you believe in God to do that? That's crazy. If I were you, I wouldn't do that. That don't make sense. You got to be careful. Who are you talking to in this season? Because this is not the season to be telling people things that you're believing God for. And if they don't have that same kind of faith, you don't need to be telling them. Why? Because they will hinder it and they will talk down on what it is that you believe in God to do. This is where you got to be strategic. You got to begin to speak with people who got the same faith that you got. People who got faith to believe what you believe in God to do. Because can I tell you, they might can't stop it, but they sure can. And this is why in the Bible, the Bible began to say when Jesus began to do miracles, he began to tell some people to step outside. They did not believe. 
Understand that if you're believing God to do some things, what's impossible to man, but it's possible to those that believe, you got to begin to be around believers. You got to begin to stand on the word and you got, can I tell you, it's going to even take you turning down your plate and to go the extra mile to have faith because some of the disciples, they could not cast out the devil and they begin to ask, Je cast out the demon and they begin to um, ask Jesus, how can we cast out the demon? And he says, some things come by fasting and by prayer. We got to begin to use hand. If you're going to have the faith, it's going to take some faith. It's going to take some prayer and it's going to take some fasting. Can I tell you, do not give up. Don't give up just because it seems like all odds are against you where it look like you're um, you're by yourself. You got to know that God is with you. You got to know that God lives on the inside of you. So on the outside, it may look like you're by yourself. You're not by yourself. You got to hold on to the promise. You know what it is that God told you that he would do. And so you got to be fully persuaded. This is why I say you got to stay in the word of God because that's what's going to help you to be focused. This is where you got to begin to tune out people that are talking negative. Tune out things that are going to dampen your faith. Don't do not be watching all kind of crazy stuff. You got to begin to watch over your spirit. You got to be watchful. You can't let everything come into your ears. You can't let everything come into your eye gaze. You can't even let every, anything come out of your mouth. Why? Because it will hinder what it is that God wants you to do. You got to who are you agreeing with? The Bible said, how walk together unless they agree. A lot of times we don't see what, what it is we've been praying for because we've been agreeing with stuff that was not of God. Can I tell you that would hinder your prayers from being answered? A lot of times people are like, in that right? No, if I don't agree with it and I know it's going to hinder what it is that I'm praying for, I say, I'm sorry, but I can't do it. You, That's right, prophet. You got to be watchful because the you to agree with anything to get not uh, get the promise. You got to understand the Bible say everything is going down but his word. So he needs you to speak the word out of your mouth. I am stressing the word. Can I tell you God is not moved by your tears. God is not moved by screaming and hollering. God is moved by you keep on professing the word. The Bible say in Ezekiel 37, he began to tell the prophet, prophesy to those dry bones. You got to understand when you're having faith blessings, you got to continue to speak to those things that be not as though it was. In other words, if you got faith for a car, it may look like, you know what, me down. I don't have a car. Ain't nobody helping me. God is looking for you to keep on speaking the word. Lord, I thank you. You promised me said that, Father, that if I call upon your name, you said that you're Jehovah Jireh. You are the Lord that provides. You got to continue to keep speaking. This is not what you're speaking in one day. You got to continue to speak it until you get a breakthrough. Until he tell you it's already done and begin to thank him for it. We got to continue. We got to know how to be like that woman that went with, that went to the unjust judge. She kept coming. She kept telling him, vindicate me of my adversary and you got to continue to contend with God and say God I'm believing you for this I'm believing you to work this out can I tell you sometimes you're going to feel tired sometimes you're going to feel weary Sometimes you're going to feel like God has forgot about you, but can I tell you, keep going. Ask God to give you the grace to keep going. We cannot quit, people of God. This is the time you even got to ask God, give me the grace to pray. Give me the strength to pray. Begin to war over prophecies, prophecies that God has spoken over your life. Begin to speak life over those prophecies. Declare and decree that they begin to manifest. You got to begin to put a demand on the anointing the spirit of God. God is looking for his people that know his God, that know their God, and they're not going to be moved by what they feel. And then this is why he's saying, hold on to the promises. He says, speak the word. You got to understand that even though it seems like your faith is getting small, begin to ask the Lord, increase my faith. Begin to say, I rebuke every spirit of doubt. I rebuke every spirit of unbelief begin to speak the word because the word is the only thing that's going to help us. Can I tell you the Bible say now faith. Can I tell you faith is a reality. Faith substance. Faith is what you don't see with your natural eye, but faith is the word. Faith is when you're pulling it from the, uh, the invisible realm, the spiritual realm into the natural realm. And this is where you got 
10. That's right. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep speaking until something happens. This is what can I tell you, Dr. Nesbitt always says, faith don't care. Faith don't care what your bill collector say. Faith don't care what your doctor say. Faith just is faith. And faith is moved by the word of God. And this is why if you're going to see God hand move, you got to be persistent. You got to have some bulldog tenacity. You got to have authority and dominion, knowing that regardless I look like I know that my God will not lie. And so I want to encourage you today. Do not give up. Do not quit. Stop talking to people who are not encouraging you. Stop talking to those people who don't understand what you believe in God for. Sometimes we just got to ponder things in our heart. Some things, it got to be between you and God. Some things, it got to be you and that, uh, your prayer partner or that you believe in God with you, but you got to stand on the word. I just want to encourage you today. I'm not going to prolong it, but I just want to tell you, keep the faith, even though it may look dark and gloomy, even though it may look bad, but keep the faith on. Say the worlds were framed by faith. You got to understand God is just looking for you to know, are you going to legislate? Are you going to govern? Are you going to operate as if you are a child of God? Can I tell you, children of God have confidence. Children of God have boldness because they know that their God would not lie. They know that their father would not lie to them. And so you got to begin to know that you know that you know. So stop reading the word one time and thinking that you're going to feel it. This is where you got to continue to speak the word daily. Speak that scripture three and four times a day on your mind. Speak the word because what you're doing, you're pregnant in the atmosphere and God is releasing angels that they're going to bring the promise to you. They're going to bring the blessings to you. They're going to go get it. And that's why the Bible says the angels are up and it does send it. And the angels are moved by the words that we speak. That's what he told Jeremiah 1 and 12. He said, I watch it to perform the words that you don't stop talking. Make sure if you've been complaining, you got to make sure that you repent. You got to say, Lord, forgive me for my mom and complaining. Forgive me, Lord, for, for talking doubt and unbelief. Forgive me. And you got to break covenant and say, Lord, I need you to cleanse my house. Cleanse my atmosphere. I have spoken negative out of my mouth because I, I believe your word. So as I see you next week on